over the past two weeks. I got the Subaru up back ready for inspection. I fished a light bulb out of the RSX tail light. I spent way too long diagnosing an issue on the Goldwing when the only issue that's on the Goldwing is me. And I dragged this thing all the way across Washington State. And well, it's here, isn't it? Um, today the goal is to get the other fender on the Subaru. Um, so in order to do that, i got to move these couple of motorcycles and pull it in here. I might also grab a new battery for it because the battery is shot. Oh, my, my cousin got this for me. i to hang it up somewhere. Maybe I'll hang it up out here. I think it just blew a fuse. Well, that is certainly an interesting development. Wonder what fuse I blew. What would I wanted to put anything to grab onto here, would have they? You just can't pull on it. There's nothing to grab onto. Why is my echo telling me about my neighbor's echo? Why? God, I can't wait. I have, I finally was able to get a compute module four for my home assistant yellow. It's been like a year, year and a half. It's in the mail, or at least it's ordered. It'd be so nice to switch to that. I see, I just couldn't get a grip on it. How would I have a grip on it? So, the second one down is ignition improves. There's some needle nose. So all those are good. It did sound almost like it came from up front, like something up there popped. So this is the main fuse here. 55 amps, and it is completely fine. I'm just taking it off so I can get out of the way. This fuse looks fine. It also looks fairly new, to be honest. Let's try replacing it with a brand new one. Let's see if it doesn't, you know, everything works again, and nothing. There's some click coming from like over here. I don't know if I want to work on this today. What a pain in the ass. Wait, did I just see sparking? Oh, is the positive terminal just not connected? I swear to God. That's totally what it fucking is. Are you kidding me? Well, that was simple. All right, let's get this thing put away and then get back to actually doing the Subaru like I was going to. That's better. That's better than it usually starts. Screw this, let's just get the jumper. It's just the headlight, it doesn't turn off when you crank it. Goldwing over there. The shadow is out here for now. But now this means I've cleared room for the Subaru. Keys. I need the jump pack because the battery's shot. So yeah, this thing runs pretty good. Um, I think I might have damaged some of the some of the drivetrain over here when I was doing donuts. 
Um, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape mechanically, I think. Right over here, you can see my fender replacement. Right here, there's still a big gap. I'm just hoping that it gets past inspection. It's not like dangerous or anything. And I've seen a lot of Outbacks with worse damage driving around, but I'll just have to see if he's feeling, if he's in a good mood that day. And then what I'm gonna have to show you in a minute here is the other fender. That's what I'm trying to replace today. All right, I think it's about time for a time lapse. back at Grandma Subaru. I think I just have the door card to replace and if uh, I'm feeling ambitious I might take out the rear tail light. Um, I'm looking at my list right now. Actually yeah that's it and then this thing will be ready for registration. Um, if I get done with this thing and still feel like working I've got to figure out the tail light for the RSX. The light bulb fell off and into the housing so I don't know how I'm gonna get that out. I might need like a little bendy clamp or something. Uh, so that's the plan for today. That's that. Time to get time lapsing. Well, that wasn't too bad. I gotta pump up the tire, get this thing out of here. First start under its own power without a jump pack. Heading over to see what I can do with the RSX tail light. You can see in there, that's the light itself. And the housing is already in there. So I gotta like fish around in there with some wire, try to grab it or something. I don't know. I got it. It turns out these things, as I thought, were just slightly magnetic. And that was enough to get it up to the opening and then pull it out. It looks like it might still be good. Of course, I'm concerned about putting it in there. See if it lights up. Well, put it in there for now. Maybe it'll stay. At least I know how to get it out now. It's time to play with a Goldwing start without a jump pack. Alright, time to go move the Volvo into the on-deck position. Gotta go grab the keys. The key fob on this thing is massive. It's huge. Figured out the alarm system on the thing. My neighbors love me. It's okay. My neighbor over there, one of her friends comes up like a couple times, couple three times a week while I'm trying to work here, and uh, just blasts the horn. It's really peaceful. 
Anyways, got the tail light fixed, got the Outback ready for inspection. I might work on the Goldwing. Well, instead of working on the Goldwing today, I think I'm gonna just clean up a little bit and then call it a day. Um, I wanna park the Goldwing up there so Leah can park in here during the winter because um, her car is really short. It should fit just, I mean, it fit. We parked the RSX over there actually one winter with some rollies to rotate it. And she was able to park behind that or in here with the RSX in front. So the Goldwing's big, but not that big. All right, this needs a, this has needed a reorganization for a while now. Um, and my oil, all these parts don't need to sit out here. They can live in the other room. So we're gonna work on that. But first I'm gonna get this other camera set up in that room so you can see where I put stuff. So it's a little cluttered in here right now, but I'm gonna make that a little bit better, but mostly just throw everything in here. Not gonna spend too much time organizing this room, so not today. Excuse the mess on my desk, but now I have three wings. So when I was trying to fix my original wing, I broke it. It doesn't quite work anymore. So I bought this one, which is fully functional except for the cracked front and cracked rear. And I'll be swapping over this front display and this rear glass to this one. And then I'll have a fully functional wing again. I'm not ready to let go. My Raspberry Pi has arrived. This is gonna be the first video to do with tech on here, but I'm really excited for this. So I think I am gonna include it. Uh, this is for Home Assistant. And I think I've had the, the Home Assistant Yellow Kit for like a year and a half or something, maybe two years. It's been a while. Here we go. In the Corona box, of course. Um, let's see. Here's the kit. I haven't actually really opened this. I just took it out of its box. I guess I'm still getting used to this YouTube thing. My phone stopped recording halfway through the unboxing. Nothing much more exciting happened. I just got it put together and started up and it pretty much set itself up. It was really easy. After that, I was getting ready to leave for the west side, so I didn't really have much other time to deal with it. Hopefully the audio on this is good enough with the Subaru running back there, but I'm about to drive it across the state. It's about, what, four or five hours today, and then another couple hours, and then six hours home. Um, I'm packing tools, just because if I pack them, then I won't need them. And I just topped off the oil, which is still a massive leak, so I've got extra oil. Uh, it was a little low on coolant, so I topped off the coolant. Um, we should be good to go. Uh, I'm going to throw tools in here and then see where we get to. I think that'll do it. I got to go get my uh, work back. Um, I'm going to be working remote for the next week. And I think I'll be just about ready to head off. Before I went across the state, I had to stop and get my allergy shot. Um, but before that, I had a, about an hour to kill, so I found a couple of geocaches. These are pretty easy ones, but they were fun to find. We're gonna take I-90 just about all the way, and I'm staying at my friend's house tonight, so enjoy the time lapse.
I stopped in George to fuel up at Shrees. If you have ever driven across the state on I-90, you probably know what I'm talking about. They usually have the cheapest fuel. Unfortunately, I forgot to fill up oil here, so you'll see me do that later on the side of the road. Here you can see me topping off the oil in the Subaru like I said I was going to. After that I just got to sit in traffic until I got to my friends pretty much. The Subaru did pretty good getting across the state. It would maintain about 55 or so going up hills. Like when we came out of the gorge, it was going about 55 or so, not too bad. You really gotta plan ahead so you can properly overtake people. Every overtake, even on a four lane highway, is exciting in the Subaru. But really, it did great. The only thing is I wish it had cruise control, but oh, it did a really good job. So this auto show we went to, they let us drive uh, quite a few almost exotic cars. We got to drive a Tesla Model S Plaid. Um, I think the highlight, that and the Hummer EV was the highlight. Um, we also got to drive a BMW where the guy let us go on the freeway and got up to like 106 or maybe even 110, I think is what I got it up to. And man, it was smooth, you know, going 80 in the Loyale feels scarier than 110 in the BMW. That was an i40, an i35 maybe. The one that's the top model that's rear wheel drive and electric. Um, there's a lot of cool cars there, but we didn't spend mo too much time on the floor. We spent most of the time um, waiting in line and driving cool cars. Um, I got to drive the Mustang uh, Mach-E GT, uh, the Ford F-250 with the 6.7. So I went to one of these auto shows back about six years ago, and um, it was a lot bigger. So I asked one of the reps about it, and he said, yeah, they used to be a lot bigger, but after COVID, people stopped bringing their cars out um, so what we had was BMW Tesla and Ford had their own booths where you could drive their cars and all the other cars that I drove were just brought by a EV um, advocacy group I guess you could say um, either way it was still fun but the auto show apparently was a lot smaller than it's been in the past I don't think it's a thing I do every year but maybe every other or every three years just to drive the newest stuff. I still can't believe they had a plaid out there. I can't believe people can buy those. It's ridiculous. This is just a clip of me bragging about how good my away from home setup is with the Steam Deck. I got Among Us and Discord set up within about 15 minutes and my friend's dog decided to hang out with me because she knew how good the setup was. So girl. The next morning I was pretty hungry and a tad hungover so I decided to stop by Mickey D's on my way out of town. Got a seat with a nice view of the Loyale. Then I stopped by Costco to top off on fuel and oil, as you see me doing here. After that, I stopped by my grandparents where my dad and cousin kicked my butt at Pinochle, and I took my cousin and myself and the Loyale 
out to the cabin property. So the Subaru made it across the state. Um, I kind of thought it would. It's been pretty reliable. It just eats a bunch of oil. Um, I think it got about 24 miles to the gallon, which isn't too bad, but it'd be a lot better if I didn't have to put, you know, three or four quarts of oil in it, which is another, what, 15 bucks at least. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been doing the past couple of weeks. Uh, next week's video, I suppose you'll see it start off with a time lapse of driving back home. That's my plan for next weekend, and I don't really have much in the way of plans for this week. Mm -hmm.